Hello everybody, welcome to the review of round 16. Uh, we welcome back to all nine teams in the AFL to the competition today. So we all had full squads barring injuries. Although some decisions were made that didn't give us all our best teams out there. Um, and some tinkering cost us some games. Me. Either way, it doesn't matter. It's getting it's getting hot. The contest is getting hot for the for the two, probably two or three final spots in the five, um, with a, a surprise team coming up and being a contender to make the finals now, and the top two pretty much cementing their final spot. But we'll have a look at the uh, review and we'll have a look at all those teams now, and we'll start off with the highest scoring team of the round. All right, so first game we're going to look at is the Maltese Falcons, who move up to sixth spot, defeating bottom of the ladder, bottom of the ladder Bombers Forever by more than 100 points. Maltese Falcons, by far the highest scoring team of the round, the only team to get above 400 this week, and they got 446. Everyone on their team had a fantastic game, um, great game actually. Besides the one who's been having the best game all year, which is which is uh, Warner, Chad Warner, um, who was a little bit down. But let's have a quick look at it now. It's 446, up 56 points on their projection for Maltese Falcons. Defeating Bombers for about 337, down 33.5. Um, so we have a quick look there. Um, full forward, Harry McKay was up 31%, got 42. As we mentioned, Chad Warner was a little bit down. Uh, where for the forwards for Bombers River, um, Hugo Hagen got 23, but uh, Jason Horn Francis had a fantastic game, was up 53% and got 54 as a half forward. Um, all around good game, and realistically, probably besides utility, probably the best spot for him in 54 as a half forward. Look at the utilities. For Bombers River, Zach Butters was a bit down, but Dacos, just shy of three figures, uh, got 99 as utility, up 9%. Um, up, up in the Gold Coast, and they're lost, but still 99. Fantastic score for Dacos, um, and been very consistent all year. In the rucks, Lloyd Meek got 20% up, got 45, was helped when Flynn went off injured, um, but he's ruck work uh, pretty much since he got into the side has been has pretty much propelled Hawthorne. Him and Day come to the side around the same time, and they've been great ever since. The Hawks should have lost. Let's, let's think about it now. If the Hawks... If McDonald kicked straight with 30 seconds to go, we would have been in Collingwood. And if we didn't lose a 40-point lead, we would have been in Port, Port Adelaide. And we would be third on the ladder. Oh, uh, well, could have, should have, would have. Um, so he got 45, anyway. English a little bit down. Green, uh, accumulator, didn't do much, really. Like, he got 68 as a midfielder, um, which is fantastic for our game, but... All in all, just a accumulator, so you're not doing too much. But for our game, 68 as a midfielder, it's up 25%. Beautiful game. And Sheasel was loopholed. He's got 51. Cripps today against Car against Richmond just smashes it. Um, he had a, could have played in any position today, really. But he was chosen as a follower and was up 55% and got 70 as a follower. Uh, Liver was well down. McGovern did go off injured. Um... I think he hurt his hand towards the end of the game. Still think he played most of the game, but still going off to three as a halfback, and he had a lot of intercepts to begin the game. Uh, but was a little bit down, where May was 50, a little bit down as well, so both halfbacks down 5%. And Crisp was a tackler. Tackler got 44, 26% up, had more uncontested possessions and possessions, and sorry, had more uncontested and contested possessions than he had uh, possessions or disposals, according to Fennec. But he got 44 to tackle up 26%, and Wines was well down, down 68%. And um, obviously, Chuck Miller wasn't used as an interchange. So let's have a look at the optimised lineup. It would have been four, it would have been an even better score for Fennec, uh, 458.5. Uh, Bombers would have had a better game um, and got 382, where a miss and Stengel were the, as the full forwards, and Dacos would have come as a half forward with Cripps as utility. Goldstein would have been in the ruck. Uh, what other changes? Stewart as a follower, Miller as a follower, and Jordan Sweet would have been the tackler. So the only changes to that one there. A 
Let's now move to the next game of the round. And it was the actual closest game of the round. However, it was also the lowest scoring game of the round. It was 8th versus 9th. Top Guns 8th. And now actually only two games out of the final spot. Um, got a win. I think he's won three or four in a row now. He got 332. Down 57.7% of his percentage. Versus Brangers Anonymous, 322.5. Pretty much with four games to go, 24, 28, 32, 36. Yeah, not going to make it, let's be honest. Um, so, yeah, uh, he got that one there. So, Top Guns, the win, 332, 322. Little teams, oh, by the way, you got to forgive me. I've been sick all week, can't talk, so my throat's a bit down. <coughs> oh, Flemmy. Um... Anyway, so look at it. Papley, as a full four, got 34 and up 24%. So fantastic. Everyone else worth talking about? I know Anderson, uh, as a follower, got 61 points, up 23% there. So he was pretty good. We've got 100 as a utility as well, 68 as a midfielder. And Ryan, look, although it's down, it's still great. 61 as a halfback. Ryan had a beautiful game as because most that's what he does every week. We're over here. Um, Neil, as, as a midfielder, got his average 55 and no one else really to talk about, to be honest. So this is going to be a quick game to talk about. Let's look at the optimised lineups. There we go. They both would have got beautiful scores. They would have got well above what they scored if they played their optimised lineups, but obviously we don't all do that all the time. I mean, I'm the only one who's done it once. Uh, top Guns would have got 420, and Rangers and Oms got 394. The changes, well, Pickett as a full forward would have come in 60. He had a good game on Friday night. And Hayward would have come in. Pat would have gone a half forward. Callahan would have come in. McGlogan to Anderson Utilities. Uh, the Rucks, no change. And the midfielders would have been Drew, come in. And then Duggan and Taranto. Um, and Ryan and Darcy Moore would come in as a halfback. Tacklers would have been Keys and Harley Reed are the changes to that one. So from here, let's move to the game of the round. It's the match of the round, and it's first versus third before the round, and has finished remaining first versus third. Sugar Daddy's first, uh, all but sealed top spot on the ladder, um, with a score of 387, down nine points on the projection. Uh, defeating Gods of Olympus, 368, down 15 points on their projection. Um, albeit, We'll discuss a little bit later. Um, let's have a quick look at it. And the highlights of this one here. Ainsworth got 48 as a half forward. He's up 85%. Probably had his best game he's played as a Gold Coast son, to be honest. Um, he had a fantastic game. Whereas on the other end, Gordon had one of his worst games as a Sydney Swan. So it got quite the contrast there and pretty much a difference in the game. Um, look at the utility spots. Marshall... Uh, kicked a few goals and got 87, but Sam Walsh had a fantastic game. Got 99, so that's the second 99 as utility this round. He was up 8%. Um, and the ruck, Zeri, was fantastic. I mean, just an example, in Supercoach, he's been averaging like 140 or 50 the last four weeks. So Zeri's been great as a ruckman. A good pickup by Sugar Daddies. He was up 18% and got 42. And the big O got 34, which is nothing to complain about as well as a ruckman. Uh, midfielders, well, let's have a look at Sugar Daddy's midfielders first. Sarong got 47, down 20%, but Wangam Wemler got 49, up 5%. So uh, average and consistent, or uh, so I say average scores and probably the scores that you want uh, in your midfield. Uh, of course, you can always get a 73, that would be great. And that was given got by Lockie Whitfield, who got 73, up 38%. Um, in the midfield, he had a beautiful game. I think he got 42 possessions all up. And then Mick had a decision to make uh, in terms of having the follow position, and he put Farrell in. He was trying to, between, trying to choose between Farrell and Amon and chose Farrell. And got 47, up 34%, so he had a good game too. The halfbacks, Barley Dale was loopholed. Um, he got 52, up 7%. He's been pretty consistent since he got a regular game in the squad. And James Sicily got 50 as a halfback, but didn't play after... What well, did he play? He stopped playing three-quarter times. So he didn't play the last quarter at all. And to lose by 
19 points. You would think the way Sicily was playing quite possibly made a difference in the game. Michael would like to think it did, and Michael told us so. Um, he was a bit upset because Hawthorne decided you know, he, apparently Sicily couldn't play, but Michael was like, sorry, sorry, apparently Sicily could have played, but Hawthorne decided not to risk it because they were so far up on the Eagles. Um, but Michael was upset because, you know, no one was thinking about him. Somebody please think of the children. Anyway, Raul, as a tackler, got 26, down 40%, and Yo was down 30%, got 36, which is still a very good tackler score. Let's have a look at the optimised lineups on this one. It's, oh, oh. so Gods Olympus would have won on the optimised lineups, 409.5 to 405. Let's have a look at the changes in the team. Marshall would have been the full forward with 40, and Hogan would have come in as full forward as well. I think Hogan was a full forward. Yes, he was. Um, Ainsworth, though that didn't change. Bradley Hill would have been the half forward for Michael. And Farrell as the utility. Um, in fact, Sugar Daddy scored Wilkie as the halfback, as a midfielder. Wengler Mirror as the halfback. And Sarong as the tackler were, were Sugar Daddy's changes. Well, Michael's changes were in Farrell, well, the, the three forwards. Um, Hinge as a midfielder. Whitfield as a follower. Clark as a halfback. And the Yo would have stayed the same. But it was Sugar Daddy's uh, cement their spot, top of the ladder. Pretty much they're going to um, stay there. Oof. Stay there for uh, until the finals. Have the buy in the first round. Get the 50 bucks back. Well done, Sugar Daddies. Um, we'll take a quick commercial break and be back with the rest of the two games of the round after this. <laughs> Welcome back to the Footy Wired review of round 16. Let's go to the next game. It's Punters Baddock second, remain second, a game clear in second now. Versus Gated Bitches fourth, who stay in that position. Uh, the game that was decided by tinkering and bad decision making by me, to be honest. Uh, Punters Paddock had consistency all throughout and got the big win 380 to, th- uh, to 361.5. Both teams were down by about nine points on their pre-game projections with that one. So let's have a look at it. Ben King, out of the two King brothers, we obviously can see that one King was fantastic and got 40, up 20%. Well, the other one wasn't a King, was a bloody jester. Um, and Connor Rosie, as a half back, as a half forward, I did try to put a moz on him. He had 30 to half time as a half forward, and I made a comment, and then I only got seven points after that. So it's still 26% and was a, had a pretty good game, um, Connor Rosie, where Kerno was down and got 31. In the utility spot, um, Dawson got 79, but Bont was fantastic. 108.5, and to think he missed three easy shots for goal, uh, which would have made a difference, but he didn't. But he was up 40% and got 108.5 for the Bont, has been in some great form. It seems like if he's going to be sick or miss out um, and then plays, he... Does great. Uh, Gorn in the ruck got 43. He's average, uh, which is just what you expect. Where Grundy was down 18%, got 29. Trelaw was well held and well down, but still kicked two goals. Still got 39 points in midfielder. And Holmes was down as well with 44. Sinclair had a great game. Had, I think, 30, not 41 to half time as well. And I mozzed him as well, only got 14. He got 55 and 17%. He was um, up 17%, got 55 as a follower. So he had a great game. As did Newcomb, who got 30, up 31%, got 51 as a follower. So both followers were fantastic. Halfbacks were great as well. Newman got 64. My Moz didn't work with Newman. He just continued to get kicks. He got 64 uh, points, up 33%. And then Zorko was loopholed and got 57. And he's been very consistent for me. Keep it up, please. And the tacklers were a bit down, 23 and 31 that one. Let's have a look at the uh, optimised lineups. Still would have been 
Panthers panic with the win. Silver being Gators, which is lost. Uh, the guy would be in the full forward. This is what pisses me off, actually. Oh, well, you know how I always change my team for the last minute. I originally had Zorko at halfback and to go interchange. And I thought, nah, because Bot might be injured. So I put Zorko as interchange. And then, you know, end up playing him halfback anyway. And I would have, and if to go had done what he did, I would not have played Max King. Would have got the win. Could have, should have, would have. Wow, wow, wow. Poor me. Bad luck. I could miss out in the finals now. Anyway, the goal in Moore uh, would have been the forward line. Great forward scores, 58 and 37. And, and then half forward would have been Chaw, King says where he is. Viney would have come as utility. He would have even got 50 something as a tackler as well. But Viney would have come as utility and got 104. The rucks as they are. Midfielders would have been Sinclair and Newcomb. So both followers would have been midfielders and got 62 each. But Dawson would have been the follower as would have Zorko and Himmelberg as the halfback. Um, and then tacklers would have been Dangerfield coming as well for that one. So let's go to the last game of the round. Last game of the round. And it's Renegades 7th defeating Seek and Destroy, who are on a bit of a form slump at the moment. Uh, so Renegades 381 uh, down 5.6 points, defeat a second destroy 318, down 76 points on their projection. I think it's just a matter of choosing the wrong players, I think. Um, but that was a good win for Renegades, and now only one game out of the five. Um, let's have a look at their lineups. Both full forwards weren't that great. Half forwards, uh, look, Danaher might have been down 9%, but 40 still a fantastic score, whereas to Toby Green had his best game for a while and was up. 24% got 47 as a half forward. Uh, utilities, nothing to talk about. The Rucks were great. Darcy got 38 up 30%. Nank up against Pinnay got 32% up on his projection and got 48 points as a Ruck for Nank. So great effort there. Flanders does what he usually does. He was up 2%, got 61 points. Uh, Blakey as a halfback was fantastic. Up 38%, got 76 points. Um... We've got 106 as utility as well. So Blakey had a fantastic game. And as a tackler, Dunkley was loopholed and it was up 46 points and got 54, 46%, uh, sorry, and got 54 points as a tackler. Um, I thought Oliver would have got loopholed into this game because he had a pretty good game, maybe as a follow or something, but clearly not. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at the optimized lineups for this one. Uh, whoa, Renegades. Reneg optimized lineup 495.5, almost 500. Um, it's going to be one of the highest scores we've seen for optimized lineup for the for the season. Again, I mean, second choice would have got 400. So let's have this team. Toby would have been the full forward, as would the coaches for second destroy. But uh, Isaac Rankin is the half 457. Uh, Dunkley is the utility 115.5, with Darcy Cameron would be the utility. Uh, the Rucks as they are, Akers in the mid as well as Flanders, Jack Still and Warple as the followers, Blakey as he was, and Barras would have been the halfback, and Oliver as a tackler, and Caldwell as a tackler. 495.5, great scores in Optimized Liner. Um, so let's have a look at the ladder. All right, so first of all, the team of the round would have got 569.5. Uh, Pickett as the full forward and Moore as the half forward. Dunkley, utility with Nank. Uh, Bont as the mid. Cripps as the follower. And then halfback Blakey and tackler Corwell. So three Renegades, two Gators, one Seek, one Falcon, and one Ranga as the team of the week. So look at the ladder. As we mentioned, uh, we'll go over this rule briefly. Uh, Sugar Daddy's uh, top spot, two games clear, three games clear, should I say, four games to go. So you think they're not really think they're not going to lose top spot um, and get their money back. Definitely guaranteed finals. Punters Paddock, uh, four games to go. So 16 points available. Ball, which means they could still not make the finals, but you would think that's very unlikely. Gods of Olympus, uh, third, 40 points, and then, then it gets interesting. 
Gators Pitchers and Second Destroy are on 36. Maltese Falcons and Renegades are on 32. Uh, who play each other next week. And then Top Guns are on 28. The other two, you might as well just say goodbye. Um, but don't, please, put your teams in next week and the week after and the week after and the week after. Um, so they can also make the finals. Remember, it goes by your points four, which is pretty much your average um, for the latter. So Maltese Falcons, will, Maltese Falcons and Renegades have got a much superior points four record over Gators, Bitches and Second Destroy um, and God's Olympus for that matter. No, no, oh, not really God's Olympus, not that much, but yeah, they, but you get the picture. So, yeah, if I have a, if you have a look at the run home that I'm going to show you in a minute, yeah, it's going to get interesting. Um, so look at next week's fixtures. Sorry, let's have a commercial break and then we'll go into the preview for next week. I love Texas in the springtime. Brisket, mesquite barbecue sauce, and jalapeno straws. You missed a spot. Everyone wants a taste of Texas. Introducing the Texas Barbecue Thick Burger, new at Carl's Jr. and Hardy. Welcome back to the preview of round 17 for 40 wide. Uh, four games to go, so it's getting down to a uh, great climax after that commercial. Um, anyway, let's have a look at uh, next week's uh, AFL fixtures. Collingwood and Essendon play on Friday night at the MCG. And then Mar at Marvel the next day, it's North Melbourne and the Suns on Saturday. Also Saturday afternoon is Port Adelaide and the Dogs in Adelaide. In Geelong, Twilight Saturday is Geelong and the Hawks, and then Saturday night is the Giants and Carlton, and Fremantle and Richmond, and then on Sunday, it's Melbourne versus West Coast, St Kilda versus Sydney, and Brisbane versus Adelaide to round off the round. Let's have a look at our fixtures. Next week, it's Rangers versus Second Destroy, Gators Bitches versus Gods of Olympus, uh, Bombers Forever versus Top Guns, Second Destroy versus Punches Paddock, so a big game there, very, very big game, big games all around actually. And then uh, Renegades versus uh, Falcons, so look at it. Third versus fourth, second versus fifth, and sixth versus seventh, some great games next week. Um, let's have a quick look at the run home. So here's my little run home. As I've done, as I remember, uh, it's ranked. The rankings are based on your ladder position. So Sugar Daddy's is worth 10 points and Andrew's worth 1 points because that's first and last. If we have a quick look at it, um, like look, for example, I, me, I play first, second, and third out of my four games to go, plus Dash, who's on a tear at the moment. Um, however, it's not the hardest draw. The hardest fixture, should I say, is Kenna, who has got first, second, third, and also Vossi. So he's got the hardest fixture. Then it's followed by me. And then it's a tie between Mick and Andrew. Easiest fixture is Vossi, who plays um, one team at the moment, anyway, as of round 16. One team in the top five and the rest the bottom five. Um... And then it's actually uh, Fennec who plays um, one team in the top five, plays Stiff twice and plays Andrew. And then followed by that, as you can, we can tell, is uh, Sugar and Collie's the top two. I mean, I suppose no one, they're the top two at the moment, so every game should be a bit easier for them. But they've got, um, yeah, you can tell who their fixtures are there. So that looks like... Uh, doesn't look great for me anyway, that's for sure. So that concludes today's review slash preview. Thank you very much for watching. Um, 
Go the Hawks, go the Gators. It all kicks off next Friday night with Collingwood versus Essendon. Should be a pretty good game. And it should be a fantastic round next week. Have a great week, everyone. See ya.